Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Virtual Agent Academy. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Well, first, some, uh, some of our announcements. Uh, Paul, if you will. Uh, as always, please visit our uh, VA and NLU community for the latest content and to answer and ask uh, questions. Of, you know, our, we're, we're all there to uh, rely on the experience of others and to catch up on the latest content. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're liking what you're seeing, feel free to click like or subscribe. And all our content and all our academies are recorded and posted on YouTube, usually uh, several days after the live recording. All right, and with that, let's get started uh, announcing our topic here. So today's topic will be how to enhance out-of-box conversations to improve user experience. And I'm Victor Chen, and with me today is a guest speaker, uh, Hardit Singh. He is a Senior Solution Advisor at Deloitte. You may have seen some of his content and videos on community, and we're lucky to have him today to uh, go through how to take some of the out-of-box content that we have and, and expand and enhance those to fit your needs. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is our brief agenda. And if we can just uh, go forward, we'll start with our overview. So um, just a brief note about our out-of-box topics. So we have a, a plenty of them. We have over 50 uh, ITSM conversations. These are just a sampling of those. Um, one of our, our newer ones is uh, dealing with the, how to manage your virtual machines. So uh, as always, please uh, visit the ServiceNow store to catch up on those. Uh, they are really uh, ways to use virtual agent as a solution to solve your users, uh, your employees' problems. Along with 50, uh, over 50 ITSM conversations, we also have conversations for HR. And not listed here is also some conversations for CSM. The ones highlighted are actually our most popular ones. Uh, you may have been using these already. Uh, submit a request, open IT ticket, check IT status, et cetera. Uh, we'll be touching upon uh, one of these today uh, in terms of uh, how to modify or enhance them. If you click once more, uh, yes. Yeah, so just again, uh, as a reminder, uh, ITSM Virtually Conversations is a store app. It is updated regularly. Uh, please check it out. Uh, the latest one, in fact, uh, came out last month, September, which contains some, uh, some new topics and enhancements on the existing ones. All right, uh, with that, let's jump into uh, our exercise. So this is a brief summary of uh, our out of box topics that we'll be touching upon with uh, Hardit. And on the left, there is a, a GitHub link uh, Hardy will be using some scripts today and feel free uh, if I can have one of our hosts uh, help copy and paste that link into the chat. Uh, you know, uh, we could, you can point to that. Uh, and then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use our Q&A uh, portion or section and tool in Zoom. And with that, I'll hand it over to Hardy. Bringing me in and interacting with the ServiceNow community. And as Victor said, uh, we'll be discussing how we can enhance our out of the box topics and what is the best way to do that. First of all, a quick introduction about myself. I'm Harjit Singh. I have over 10 years of IT experience and in service now, I have around six plus years of experience as admin and as well as developer. And uh, let's quickly start for the first topic. So the dynamic greeting topics. Uh, so this is the most use uh, topic because uh, this is the first message or first thing uh, what you see on virtual agent. So I'll go ahead and create a copy of dynamic greetings topic. So first of all, out of the box, uh, this topic uh, shows the first name of the user, hi and something, and then it will show how can I help you? And then it will show me everything button. So for that, we will go to dynamic greeting and topic, which is out of the box. And if you notice it is read only because out of the box, all of the topics are read only. So just to create a copy of this topic, we will click on duplicate and then we will give a name according to our organization standards. For example, for this, I can go ahead and give us VA underscore greetings maybe. And then I will save this. And this will create a copy of this topic. And if you uh, notice, this has been selected as type topic. 
but if we want uh, a dynamic greeting or a greeting to be present on the virtual agent we need to ensure that it is a setup topic so please ensure for greeting topics we are selecting the type as setup topic and then we can make the condition as false because we don't want to display this particular topic to the end users and then i will go ahead in the flow and now you can see this flow is editable and we can go ahead and make changes to this as well right now what i'll i'll try to do in this topic is i will have a greeting message uh, for example if i am in us and the top uh, the greeting will show as good morning and if i am in india right now which is the evening time it will show good evening and the first name of the current user and i will go ahead and make a small change here at, in the last as well which will come to later so as of now if you see this topic is uh, currently checking if the uh, the current user is logged in or not and it will show this particular message hello and the name of the fir uh, first name of that particular user i will go ahead and paste my code here which is available on github which victor told you you will get this uh, access to this particular github code uh, after the session and in the youtube description as well i'll just go ahead and simply copy this code and i'll just paste it here and if you see in the second line of code i'm just getting the first name of the user and then i'm getting the current time zone of this particular user who is logged in so if you see get user id of the current uh, logged in user and then i'm checking if the hour is less than 12 so it means it's before 12 pm so it is good morning and if it's before 6 pm it's good afternoon otherwise we'll show good evening right now i'm logged in as system admin and my current time zone is showing as la so it's morning there so we should get hello and then my first name which is system and then i should be getting good morning as well so i'll just save this and i will go ahead and make a small change in the out of the box topic if i scroll down at the bottom and if you can see here send topic picker and you can see this message on line number 11 where it says let me know how i can help you today i'll just have a question mark here and i will add a space and we will check if that is visible or not i will save this topic i'll click on test again and if you can see here my current time is in la is in the morning so it shows me good morning and my first name similarly you can have your own customization done in your greeting topics for example if you want to show outages current outages so that a uh, user doesn't go ahead and create an incident or maybe you can show your major incidents what are in your organization currently happening or maybe i did it one uh, for the uh, one of my client where we were displaying the current assets which are allocated to the end user so if he might have a laptop and maybe uh, a desktop as well so they were showing it at this greeting message so you can go ahead and make as many customizations as you want and i will publish this and just to make this greeting topic available on the virtual agent will go under collaboration and under that we will go to custom greetings and setup and i will open the default chat experience and if i scroll down at the bottom you would be able to see currently the greeting message is set as greetings which is out of the box again i'll go ahead and remove this and if i click on this reference icon you are able to see only the setup topics that is why in the first step if you remember i made this topic as a setup topic so please ensure that that is done and i will save this so now in your service portal you would be able to see this particular greeting message whenever some user logs in does anyone have question with this first topic please let me know
Yeah, we have one quick question, Hardit. Uh, very briefly, someone asked uh, how you can put pull the user's full name first and last. Oh, yes, right. That's easy. If you go ahead here and then here, maybe you can use get display name and it will display the first name and the last name of the user. I'll just quickly do a test. Hope it works. Okay. So now you can see the first name is system and the last name is administrator. You can use as many user functions you want. For example, if you want to get the CSID and do something out with that, so that can also be applied here. I hope that resolved the issue, the question. Yep, thank you. Cool. Okay. Now we'll go to a topic block and I don't know if everyone is aware about the topic block. In this um, particular topic block of create incident, we will make some uh, customization or we will enhance it. If you see an icon next to the name of this topic, it signifies that this is a topic block and topic blocks are basically uh, the reusable code or you can use these topic blocks in your existing topics or in your new topics and you don't have to write the code again and this will save you the amount of coding and the user experience of the developers is improved largely and again as i i had told you earlier uh, we cannot edit out of the box topics we'll go ahead and create one and i'll just uh, keep the same uh, naming convention and i will say va underscore create incident and this will create an editable copy of this particular topic block. And if you notice something different here, the topic has already been selected as, the type has been selected as topic block. And if I go to the flow and I'll just zoom in a bit. So one thing which is unique about topic blocks is that they can accept the inputs and we can have the outputs for the topics as well. For example, if I click on start, you can see it accepts five inputs currently. You can go ahead and add more by clicking on plus sign or maybe remove if you don't need anyone, uh, any of these uh, values. And then you can go ahead and make any default values as well. And lastly, you can make these fields and as mandatory. So whenever this topic block is referred in some other topic, these two fields will be always be mandatory and you cannot save that particular topic without giving these two values. Right now, out of the box, what happens is it, it will go ahead and create an incident and it doesn't have any um, default assignment group. So I know most, most of the companies have assignment rules and they uh, assign the incident automatically based on category maybe a subcategory or some other uh, condition. But what if any assignment rule doesn't match or anything doesn't happen and we are creating one incident through virtual agent and it will keep hanging around in forever and no team will actually take a look into it because there will be no SLAs and it is not in anyone's queue. So what I will do is I will go ahead and make a change here where I will check if the incident has an assignment group or not. And if it doesn't have an assignment group, I will assign a default assignment group and which is service desk, which is out of the box group. I'll just go ahead and copy the code for that from GitHub. It's just a small piece of code where I will drag and drop the script action under this no. So this yes and no out of the box signifies if there was a universal request created for this incident. So as I don't have universal request plugin activated, so it will always go into the no part. And I will say assign the incident. And I will go ahead and 
I'll just paste the code here. And you can see in the code, I'm glide, I'm doing a glide record on the incident table. And I'm picking up the incident sys ID, which was created in the previous steps, which is out of the box. And I'm checking if there is an assignment group already to that, it doesn't do anything. And if there is uh, the, if the assignment group is empty, we will have this particular assignment group assigned to that particular incident. Uh, I know we can have uh, this sys ID stored in sys property, but for this demo purposes, I've just hard coded here. But when you are doing it in your organization, you should have this particular assignment group in or the sys ID in the system properties. I will go ahead and save this. And I will publish this particular topic. And now if you remember, I told you these topic blocks can be called from other topics. So I have already created one topic called generate an incident. And I will be calling our topic block here. So if you see, I'm in the first step, I'm capturing the short description of the issue. And then I will drag and drop the topic block. So I will have to give a topic block here which I want to call and we create incident. So all the topic blocks, which are marked as type topic block will be available in this particular dropdown. And I will select this. And if you remember, there were two mandatory fields here. I can go ahead and give caller as input variables user. So this is out of the box input variable and it captures the current logged in user. And in the short description, I can have the user input component, which I had dropped, dragged and dropped, and I'm capturing the short description. I'll click on this and again, input variables and short description. So it will have both the mandatory fields now. I can go ahead and capture CMDB CA or the configuration item of that user automatically, or I can get it from the end user. And I can have the description as well. I will skip that for now for this particular demo and I will save this and publish. If I quickly test this, you're able to see, please describe the issue. I can say not able to log in in Zoom. So it will go ahead and create an incident from that topic block. And if you see here, the assignment group has been given as service just because our, this is an out of the box uh, topic and uh, there are no assignment rules. That's why it assigned this particular incident to the service desk team. Again, you can go ahead and make changes in this uh, topic block. Like for example, you can have the category automatically assigned, maybe the priority or maybe you can get the urgency from the end user. How urgent is your issue? And then you can uh, customize the description automatically based like, for example, this is the issue raised at this time and this is the issue. So you can give more introduction to the service desk people about this issue. Cool. OK, so I'm, does anyone have question on the topic blogs? here uh, we have one question uh, where are we using these input values and i believe this question has been addressed already because you used it to um uh you used the input values in the topic block or you're gonna put you're gonna call input val inputs into those input values via the topic which calls a topic block. So for things like uh, assignment, not assignment group, for things like caller and short description, you get that from the topic to feed into the topic block. And then that topic block uses those values to create your incident. All right. Thanks, Victor. Uh, yeah, and then another question um, from Leonard. Did you hard code the assignment group because the VA developer did not have access to create a business rule that could assign the assignment group on incident creation? 
Right. So you can go ahead and create your own business rules or maybe you can have the assignment rules there. In this particular topic block, I'm just checking if anything out of the box or maybe custom thing was applied and there was some assignment group or not. So if you remember here, I'll just quickly go. And if you see in the first step in script action, so this is where actually the incident is being created and the sys ID is being stored in this particular variable. So at the end, when everything has happened and before displaying the message, uh, what is the incident number and other details, I'm just checking here whether there was any assignment group uh, assigned to that particular incident or not. So it's just like a check that assignment group is not empty. If there are any assignment rules already there, or if you have any business rules written or any script includes, and it has assigned already an assignment group. So this code wouldn't run. Got it. I hope yeah. that answered your question. Yep, thank you. Let's go on to your last topic and the time remaining that we can yeah. any other questions we can address at the end. Right, yeah, sure. Okay, so this is uh, the one called submit a request. And this is particularly used for submitting a catalog request. And if I just quickly duplicate this, I'll go ahead and maybe name it as VA underscore submit a request. And I will save this. I'll quickly go to the flow. And if you see here, we are providing end user a functionality to search for the item which he's looking for in the catalog item. And then there is a topic block which is being called, which is also out of the box called search catalog item. And it will search through all the catalog items and it will return whether any item is matching that particular search term or not. And if it is not matching, it will again ask search again. And if it has been found, it will request a catalog item, which is again, another topic block where the catalog item request will be submitted. You can go ahead and take a look in these topic blocks uh, when, whenever you have time. And let me know if you have any questions in these topic blocks as well. And after that, once it is requested, it will display the message that a new request has been generated for you. And it will show that dis uh, display the details of that request. So what I will be doing here is if you have used the service portal, we have a widget called popular items. So what I will try to do is I will try to have the similar functionality and instead of calculating the uh, popular items, I will try to hard code them, which usually happens in the uh, organizations where we will have some uh, three or four items, which are mostly uh, ordered by the end users and then we will try to order those and we will keep the search functionality intact as well, which is out of the box. So I will use user input as static choice here. And then I can say input choice. And I can say, please select an item. So if in my organization right now, there are many Zoom requests uh, being created or maybe Snagit requests, or maybe for a standard laptop due to this COVID situation, I think these are the most uh, commonly used items which are being uh, ordered by the end users. And then I will go ahead and have that there as well. Snagit, Zoom. And I will keep the backend values similar to the labels as well. And then maybe standard laptop. And finally, I can have the search item as well, which is out of the box. And after this, I will put a decision box here which will decide what the user has selected. And I'll just rename this as search. 
and I will give the condition here. Input choice is search item. So if anyone selects from that static list, uh, he wants to search, we will be using the same search item, which is out of the box. And then I'll create another, I'll click on the plus sign and I'll click uh, create another branch where I can say other choices. And in the condition I can say, input choice is not search item. So if uh, selecting, we will have a separate code executed for that. And I'll just drag and drop my script action here. And I'll go to my GitHub again, and I'll go to request an item. And I will copy the code here. And I can say item selected. I'll go ahead and copy this, paste this code. And if you can see in this code, I can, I'm just using the VA inputs, which I have actually I'll just take a look here. What is the name I have kept? Sorry. Input choice. Okay. And I will have it input choice dot two string. So I will have it here. Um, what the user has selected, for example, Zoom or maybe Snagit or standard laptop. And then I'm doing a glide record on catalog item and I'm capturing the sys id of that particular catalog item if i go to maintain items i have already created zoom and snagit there if you can see here the first two items zoom and snagit and standard laptop is already out of the box so we will get the sys id of that particular item and we are inputting and we are saving that sys id into va inputs dot catalog item id and I will save this and I'll just zoom out a bit and I will just directly order this item because I already have the sys ID. And if you take a look at this particular topic block, the mandatory field here is the catalog item ID, which is the sys ID. And I'm storing the sys ID of that particular item, which I want to order in this catalog item ID variable and rest of that will be out of the box. If I save this and publish, I'll do a quick test on this. So you will be able to see now, there are four options available for the user if he wants to select Snagit, Zoom or standard laptop, or if he wants to search for the item. For example, if we go with Zoom, it will go ahead and search for the Zoom Sys ID and it says uh, it goes into the requested item uh, topic block. And I will say yes. And we are currently in a topic block where uh, the name of that topic block is requested item, request an item. And I'll just say yes. And now you can see from that requested item topic block, we were able to request for the item. And this is the request number which has been generated for this topic or for the end user. And you can see the Zoom has been requested for that particular user. Similarly, users can use out of the box functionality for searching. And we haven't touched that functionality, so that is intact. Just do a quick test on that as well. And you are able to see that this is working. If I search for laptop, it will show me all the options for the laptops which are available in the inventory. Uh, oh, so anyone has any question on this? I know this is a bit complicated topic.
Oh yeah, we're a bit short on time, but uh, for those who can still uh, join with us, thank you for your patience. Uh, someone did ask, how is the search term uh, passed from the input choice to the out of the box search? And if I may take a crack at this, I believe which we will, just to recap what we did is we searched the catalog item name, right? A laptop, a Zoom or Snagit. And, we, and from the name we inferred or we pulled the sys ID of that catalog item and then pass that sys ID to the topic block because that's what the request catalog item topic block needs is the catalog item ID. So that's how you go from, yeah, exactly. How you go from name to catalog ID, uh, ID to sys ID and, and pass it, and pass it uh, into the request catalog item topic block. Right. And then another question, this is more a generic question. Um, can we link Flow Designer and VA to work together sequentially? Quick answer to that is yes, uh, we can. We actually have a, uh, we had a virtual agent academy on that last month, I believe. Um, so take a look at that, but we do have an out of box topic block, I'm sorry, an out of box uh, utility uh, called action, which, which you can do that for. Great, awesome. Well, uh, we're at the top of the hour and we're a little bit past that. Thank you again for those uh, still on. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this will be recorded and post it to YouTube soon. Uh, the GitHub link has been shared. We will attach that GitHub link to the YouTube video as well. Again, uh, my thanks to Paul, Nabil, and mostly, of, and most of not, not least, of course, Hardit for our VA Academy today. And uh, thank you all for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.